Brahma said, O sage, once I along with you saw Sati standing near her father. She is, as it were, the essence of the three worlds. When she saw both of us honored and bowed to by her father, Sati, following the conventions of the world, saluted us with joy and reverence. At the end of obeisance, O Narada, you and I sat in the fine seat provided by Daksha. When she humbly bowed again, I spoke to her, O Sati, secure as your husband, the Lord of the universe, the omniscient Shiva who desires only you, and whom you too desire. O auspicious lady, you shall secure as your husband the person who has not taken, does not take, and will not be taking another wife. He will be unlike others. O Narada, after saying this to Sati, we stayed in Daksha's abode for a long time. We were bidden farewell by him, and we went to our respective places. On hearing that, Daksha became delighted and free from all worries. Thinking that she was a great goddess, he took her with him. Thus, with various charming girlish sports, the goddess, who is favorably disposed to her devotees and who had assumed human form out of her own will, passed the state of girlhood. After passing her girlhood and reaching the state of early youth, she attained beauty in every limb, which blazed forth brilliantly. Daksha, the lord of worlds, on seeing her blooming in the proper age, thought within, How shall I give my daughter to Shiva? She too desired to attain Shiva. Her desire grew every day. After knowing her father's idea, she approached her mother. Sati, the great goddess of wide intellect, sought the permission of her mother to perform the penance with Shiva as the goal for the happiness of her mother, Virini. Firmly resolved in her desire to secure Shiva as her husband, she propitiated him in her own house with the permission of her mother. In the month of Ashvin, September-October, on Nandatitis, the first six and eleventh month of the lunar fortnight, she worshipped Shiva with great devotion, offering cooked rice with jaggery and salt. She spent a month like that. On the Chaturdashi, fourteenth day of the month of Kartika, October-November, she worshipped and meditated on Lord Shiva, offering sweet pies and puddings. On the eighth day in the dark half of Marga Shirsha, November-December, Sati worshipped Shiva with cooked barley and sesame seeds and spent the other days in devotion. On the seventh day in the bright half of Pausha, December-January, Sati spent the night in keeping awake and worshipped Shiva in the morning with cooked rice and krishara, jaggery mixed with sesame seeds. She kept awake in the full moon night of Magha, January-February, and worshipped Shiva on the banks of the river, wearing wet clothes. On the fourteenth day of the dark half of Falguna, February-March, she kept awake in the night and performed special worship of Shiva with bilva fruits and leaves in every period of three hours. On the Chaturdashi day of the bright half of Chaitra, March-April, she worshipped Shiva with palasha and damana flowers day and night. She spent the rest of the month remembering him. After worshipping him with cooked barley and sesame seeds on the third day of the bright half of Magha, January-February, she spent the month on offering the products of milk obtained from a cow. After worshipping him with the offerings of cloths and brihati flowers on the full moon night of Jeshta, May-June, she spent the whole month observing fast. On the Chaturdashi day in the bright half of Ashada, June-July, wearing a black cloth, 
She worshipped Rudra with Brihati flowers. On the 8th and 14th days in the bright half of Shravana, July-August, she worshipped Shiva with holy sacred threads and cloths. After worshipping Shiva with various fruits and flowers on the 13th day in the dark half of Bhadra, August-September, she took only water on the 14th day. Keeping strict control over her diet and repeating various mantras, she worshipped Shiva with different fruits, flowers, and leaves, fresh and readily available. The goddess Sati, who had assumed human form out of her will, became firmly devoted to the worship of Shiva on every day and month. Concluding all the sacred rites of Nanda, Sati began to meditate on Shiva with concentrated devotion. She was steady, and she never thought of anyone else. In the meantime, O sage, devas and sages, with Vishnu and me at their head, came to see the penance of Sati. On arrival, Sati was seen by the devas as achievement in embodied form, or as success incarnate. She was completely engrossed in meditating on Shiva. She had reached the stage of the enlightened seers. With palms joined in reverence, the devas paid respects to Sati joyfully. The sages bent down their shoulders in respect. Vishnu and others became delighted. Vishnu and others and the celestial sages joyously praised Sati's penance. They were even surprised at that. Bowing again to the goddess, the sages and devas went immediately to Kailash, the great mountain dear to Shiva. Lord Vishnu approached Shiva with great joy, accompanied by Lakshmi and me too, along with Savitri, the goddess of speech. On arrival there, after paying respects to the Lord with great excitement, we lauded him with various hymns, with palms joined in reverence. The Davis said, Obeisance to thee, O Lord, from whom the mobile and immobile beings have originated. Obeisance to the great Purusha, Mahesh, the supreme Isha, and the great Atman. Obeisance to the primordial seed of everyone, the Chidrupa, one possessed of the form of consciousness, the Purusha beyond Prakriti. Obeisance to thee who createst this world, by whom this is illuminated, from whom this originated, by whom this is sustained, to whom this belongs, and by whom everything is kept under control. We bow to that self-born deity who is beyond this and everything that is great, who is the undepraved great Lord, who sees these within himself. We have sought refuge at his feet, who is the supreme Brahman, who is the soul of everyone, who is the greatest witness with unbarred vision and who assumes various forms. Obeisance to him whose region is not known by devas, sages, or siddhas. How then can other creatures realize it or express it? He is our goal supreme, seeking to see whose region great saints free from attachment perform unmutilated vows of release. Thou hast no change like death, birth, etc., that yields misery, Yet by means of Maya thou assumest all these. Obeisance to thee, who art the great Isha and the performer of miracles. Obeisance to Brahman, the great soul who is far removed from words. Obeisance to the formless being of immense form, the great of unlimited power, the lord of the three worlds, the witness of all and all pervasive. Obeisance to the light of Atman, richly endowed with the happiness of liberation, of the form of knowledge. Obeisance to Thee, the all-pervasive Lord. Obeisance to the Lord of salvation, who is accessible only through the cessation of worldly activities. Obeisance to Thee, the great Purusha, the great Lord, the bestower of all. 
Obeisance to the conscious principle in the corporeal frame, identical with Atman, the cause of all perception. Obeisance to the original Prakriti, the great presiding deity of everything. Obeisance to thee, the great Purusha, the great Lord, the bestower of all. Obeisance to thee, the three-eyed, the five-faced, and the ever-luminous. Obeisance to thee, who hast no cause, and who seest all the qualities of the sense organs. Obeisance, obeisance to thee, the cause of the three worlds, and salvation. Obeisance to the quick bestower of liberation, and deliverer of those who seek refuge. Obeisance to thee, the ocean of knowledge of Vedic texts. Obeisance to thee, the great Lord, the ultimate goal of devotees, possessed of three attributes. Obeisance to thee, O great Lord, whose fiery heat of knowledge is latent in the sacrificial churning rod for the production of the fire of three attributes. Obeisance to thee, whose form is beyond the reach of fools, and who livest forever in the hearts of the wise. Obeisance to the liberator of the individual soul from the noose, to the bestower of salvation to the devotee, to the self-luminous, the eternal, the unwasting, incessant knowledge. Obeisance to thee, the self-contemplator, the unchanging, the holder of great suzerainty and glory. Never be ruthless unto them who resort to the four aims of life and desire the cherished final goal. Obeisance to thee, O Shiva. Thy devotees never desire anything solely for themselves. They sing the auspicious glory of thy life. We eulogize thee, the imperishable Supreme Brahman, the omnipresent whose features are unmanifest, who can be attained by the yoga of the soul and is complete. O Lord of everything, we bow to thee who art beyond the perception of the sense organs, who hast no support, who art the support of all, who hast no cause, who art endless, the primordial and the subtle. All the devas, Vishnu and others, and the world of mobile and immobile beings are created by deficient digit with the difference of name and form. Just as the flames of fire and the rays of the sun emerge and submerge, so also this current of creation and dissolution. Thou art neither a deva nor an asura, nor a man nor a brute, nor a brahmana, O Lord. Thou art neither a woman nor a man, nor a eunuch. Thou makest nothing, either the existent or the non-existent. Whatever remains after all negations, thou art that. Thou art the maker, the sustainer, and the destroyer of the universe. Thou art the soul of the universe. We bow to that Lord, Shiva. We bow to thee, the Lord of Yoga, whom the yogins who have destroyed all their actions by means of yoga are able to realize in their minds purified by yoga. Obeisance to thee, whose velocity is unvariable, who has three shaktis, who art identical with the three Vedas. Obeisance to thee, the delighted protector of immense potentiality. O Lord, thou art impenetrable to the wicked sense organs. Worldly lords cannot reach thee, who art beyond all paths. Obeisance to thee, whose splendor is mystically hidden, and who art always engaged in the uplift of the devotees. We bow to thee, the great Lord, whose greatness cannot be surpassed, whose power the confounded fool with egotistical mind can never realize. Brahma said, After eulogizing the great Lord, all the devas, Vishnu and others, stood silently in front of the Lord with their shoulders stooping down with great devotion. <laughs>